I am Zakir, and I am a brand strategist and event strategist. And I wanted to talk today about vulnerability. So vulnerability is something that only really strong people <laughs> feel like they can really tend to do. And um, that's what I do. You know, my brand, my podcast, I have a podcast called See Life Different. I have a book called um, Seeing Life Through a Different Lens. And that's really what it's about, about resilience. And so I've been on a high, if you will, because um, just as of recently, I got to um, go to a new city and attend a new event and be around new people. And it just, you know, really just kind of refreshed a certain a few things in my mind that I wanted to share with you, you know, because I think what also gets missing when it comes to vulnerability is that no transformation happens if you don't share it. So um, let's see. So for background, uh, if you are new to me, I am also a eye cancer survivor. So you will see one eye um, looking different than the other. And I am also a, a entrepreneur. I'm also a caregiver. I am also, I do a lot of things. And partially, I feel like that's part of the problem. That's why we're having this conversation right now. So vulnerability, you know, being vulnerable, I think growing up as a childhood cancer survivor, you know, there's still a uh, a, a bit of trauma that's still embedded into my DNA, right? But also so in the fact that, you know, if you follow astrology, I'm also a Sagittarius. So I'm a fire sign, a December baby. So um, personality-wise, that throws in a lot of things. And most of it being um, this things that I call where I am misindependent or I strive to be, right? And whenever I'm not independent, it affects me. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's been interesting. Here we are, it's 2023. And seasonal wise, we just had like two eclipses. And, you know, I was doing some reflecting before I traveled to Austin, Texas, to Africa, to be specific, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. But um, one of the things that I've realized is that um, I pretty much was like going through a rebirth, right? So as of March 2023 was kind of the last real business related thing, if you will, that I worked on. Um, so I had attempted, I did it, and I'm grateful for the three speakers that said yes and stuck through through it with me and whatnot. Um, but the last real business related thing that I did for, you know, myself and my brand was in March and I had a virtual summit um with three speakers, one in the industry of marketing, one in the industry of nutrition, one in the industry of media slash empowerment. Um and I repurposed them to my podcast. So, you know, I, there's so many really big dreams and visions that I have when it comes to just empowering women of color, you know, to tell their story, to, you know, start, grow, scale their businesses, to live their life that really ep uh, is the epitome of freedom to them. So there's so many, you know, goals that, that I have when it comes to live fulfilling my purpose. Um, but I think what often happens is, sure, there's imposter syndrome will creep up, uh, fear will oft often creep up, procrastination will oft often creep up. Um, but I think the most, the new word, the new thing that I am, now that I've really kind of made it out the tunnel and I see the rainbow now that, you know, people pleasing is actually a real thing that, that's really kind of hindering what I feel hindering. Um, my definition of success, you know, you know, growing up the youngest of um, three half siblings, um, you know, there's always been a sense of, okay, how can I exuberate love through, you know, any of the love languages, whether it's physical touch, whether it's quality time, whether it's active service. Um, and so, you know, that, that tends to play a role as well you know when you are able to I mean you, you have that sense of fulfillment because you feel like okay so and so is happy the person who I consider close to me is happy so I'm happy right but then the older you get and you and the more in tune you get to be to yourself your authentic self you realize I'm glad they're happy but I'm not <laughs> right and, and you can feel it 
right? There's a difference between feeling butterflies after you've helped someone versus just feeling nothing, feeling numb, you know? So people pleasing does actually play a role too. And so I think, I feel like I'm just ready to get into the nitty gritty of like, okay, well, why are you telling us all this? What's up, <laughs> right? Get to the point, right? So, you know, it's been really interesting because I've been doing all of these things. Um, on top of surviving cancer, which is eye cancer, on top of um, being hard of hearing, wearing hearing aids. Now I have one, I'm supposed to have two, but I have one. Um, and on top of being a part-time caregiver, on top of being a part-time contractor worker, on top of being still discovering who I am, right? And how to walk in that direction. All of the things, adulting, basically, right? I mean, if you're someone who's, you know, not a millennial, you're probably like, girl, been, been there, done that, <laughs> right? But, you know, this method really is for somebody who is a millennial, who's really just like, this is, is you're touching exactly what I'm going through right now. So, you know, that's why I was on my heart to really share this. And so, you know, it's been really, really interesting. Of I've always understood the phrase, fake it till you make it. I've always understood the phrase of um, work with what you got, right? And I feel like that's literally what I've been doing. Um, now, I'm not a materialistic person by any means, although I appreciate technology. I work in technology. Um, I utilize the heck out of technology. So I'm more of a technology person than materialistic person. You know, I'm, I'm now, you know, working in the healthcare industry, which can suck, sometimes subsidize into the beauty industry. And yes, I'm wearing makeup, but, you know, it's it's only today, <laughs> today only. Maybe if I do another live video um, that I know is going to be used for like later on down the road, um, you know, you'll see me uh, in, in makeup. But, you know, I'm not materialistic. I'm not vibing by beauty. Um I care more about the soul of a human being, you know, so much so that, uh, again, back to the people pleasing, I, I have such, I'm such a visionary when it comes to ensuring that people are seen and heard and loved on that, you know, the older I get, the more I'm starting to see clearly that there are moments where I'm like, what about me, right? Growing up, being so self-aware about myself uh, because I spent so much time with myself, um, you know, I know me, <laughs> right? But I think, um, again, going back to people pleasing, where it's just like, okay, you conform to the environment that you're in. You conform to the people that you care about. And, um, you know, that really does affect your well-being, right? So, there's so many people that are stressed out right now. There's so many people that are, you know, not living their dreams and then losing sleep over it. Um, but a lot of times it's because you're trying to people please for everyone else, you know? And it's a generational thing, you know, again, I'm big on psychology, I'm big on history, and I've really been observing and that's exactly what it is, especially amongst people of color, that we've always needed to serve somebody, right? So being able to have the definition of freedom is a really, really new concept to people, and I completely understand it. So that's that first part. The second part is, now I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> I wrote at my notes because I'm like, stick to the point and, and say it, just say it. Dude. So, you know, one of the interesting things that I've been observing is that when it comes to the technology things, I haven't really bought anything new. Why is that? There's two things. One is, like I said, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, <laughs> right? But also um, because I literally have not prioritized that financially, you know? But at this point, I also feel like I'm kind of running around in circles, running ragged, um, because technology is improving all of the time. And I know this because I've been wearing hearing aids since I was like three years old. And so maybe I'll start there. Like these hearing aids were, um, I wouldn't say given to me, but again, people pleasing. It was another one of those instances where I knew I wasn't ready, but I said yes anyway. Um, I got hearing aids in 2017. Um, and it's time for new ones. One is I'm technically supposed to be wearing two of them because 
Um, I, I have the same level of hearing loss in both ears as a result of the radiation of the cancer, but uh, though not true, you know, because of technology, I'm always on the phone. So I take the hearing it out of my best ear um, whenever I'm on the phone. But there is technology where I don't have to do that at all. But again, that's that's that costs money. Um, and let's see the other thing. I feel like there's something else I was gonna say about the hearing aids. Maybe just an educational tip of like, yes, I am millennial and I do wear hearing aids, and hearing aids actually help me to hear and understand and to be able to function in as well. I can understand the voices. I can live really without it, but hearing aids make all the difference in the world as far as understanding, especially for people who are not used to interacting with people who are hard of hearing. So they're so used to not making eye contact and, and mumbling or pretty much equivalent of talking to themselves when they're actually talking to somebody else. So basically um, doing those things. And so then the next thing is because I have this background in photography, I have a camera that I've had, I think officially 10 years. Because I got it uh, when I was in photography school. And it was one of the first kind of variations. It's a Nikon. It was one of the first variations of um, uh, in integrating photos with video. Um, and so I've noticed that there are moments like that that kind of, it, it, it's not broken, but there could be better systems, right? Better method to the madness. Um, so I've noticed that there are cameras out there where now it's Wi-Fi enabled, where I can just automatically send these photos over to somebody who I can also as an editor, you know, because um, my last, one of my favorite styles of photography are portraits, right? Um, in one of my last sessions um, was in 2021, and the client ended up was happy about the photo, but was unhappy about the service because of the, you know, a lack of, a huge lack of time between following up. Um, and again, just trying to look good and just people please, I couldn't even tell her. I didn't, I mean, until maybe like <laughs> weeks later when she's like, where my photo? Couldn't really tell her what has been going on in my life you know, health-wise, what was going on. So, you know, technology can help <laughs> in a way, make things a lot easier. Um, and then the other thing, I think one of my other, other big goals is that I've always wanted to live internationally. I've just always known that about me. I think being blessed to have parents that have, one, done the military service, and, and two, actually uh, have a, my grand, my my mom's dad is actually an immigrant, so always knowing that there is a bigger world out there. Um, I've always had this goal to really just kind of live internationally <laughs> to the point where, um, what was it? I've had, I had a car for ten, nine years. I had a car for nine years. And um, there, of course, two things. There was one is like, it was about time. I mean, unless I was going to save up the money to uh, keep it, Main, keep maintaining it it was a uh, 2008 and i just sold it um last year so it would either save up the money to keep maintaining it keep you know the insurance and keep everything active or you completely sell it um so i lean towards selling it because one and you know again i'm i'm, I'm a part-time caregiver so now at this point uh i drive the other car <laughs> you know the car that's not driven as often so i'm like okay I just sell it and then that way I don't have to worry about figuring out what to do with the car when I do go overseas. You know, but again, that gets that that gets a little difficult because you move to a city, well it's not really a city, I live in a town, um, where there's very limited public transportation. So I love public transportation, I love trains, um, but something gotta give, right? Um, and then Technology. So I think all these things because, you know, also what I do career-wise, these are all the things that have to do with career-wise, right? These are all the things that you would, you know, from the financial standpoint, write off as, as taxes and whatnot. So um, career-wise, you know, computer is literally my baby, my life, right? Um, I, you know, when I do my part-time contracted work, um, you know, it's a set for our schedule. And it's just so interesting because I'm literally, I'm on this computer for those four hours doing the online production management. And then when those four hours are done and I clock out, it's basically just 
closing the laptop, close the laptop, open it again so I can use it for my entertainment. So it's like, okay, wait a minute. There's got to be a better system. There's got to be a way to kind of be able to separate, you know, the your, your home from your work. And, um, you know, again, just, just observations about technology and, and ways that it could be used. So, and then last but not least, so one of my other other observations is that one of my other gifts is digital marketing, social media. Um, so I'm I'm grateful that right now I can keep them separate. There's a phone that I have I've been holding on to. It's there's nothing wrong with it, not yet anyway. Uh, except right now I'm starting to observe that I can't download all the apps that I want to because some of them aren't even fit for this version of the phone <laughs> aside from the fact that you know eventually the phone will slow down too but you know I've held on to this you know Samsung S7 um since it was first released I probably got it you know very much when it was first released and but then on the other hand of the phone believe it or not I don't even have a phone plan right now I mean I have a phone but I don't have a phone plan it's one of those situations where I am on a government phone <laughs> right but again that doesn't work internationally. The government is only for the country you are in. So, you know, it's like, okay, how do we make this work? So, you know, there's been a lot of just observations of like, okay, why aren't you making this work? Like, what, what's the hold up? What's the hold back? And so that's pretty much what, it, what it's been. Like putting myself, not necessarily last, but in the bottom part of the top five. <laughs> like take care of this person, that person, this person, that person. Oh yeah, and then there's me. Right. So naturally, as women, we're caregivers and we tend to do that. And this is definitely my, my call to you to just stop this. <laughs> you're tired. And this is why you're tired. You know, you, 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 you're daydreaming on the life that you know you want and desire and deserve to have because abundance is your birthright. But right now, we're, you're still going through your lessons that you're meant to live on your own time. Um, when it comes to just knowing how to confidently say no. That's the first thing, how to confidently say no. Because one, you can just say no, <laughs> but then come back 24 hours later after thinking about it or after seeing how upset the person is and just say, you know what, I changed my mind, right? And then two, the other thing is also knowing when to say no. because that's a whole nother topic but knowing when to say no makes a huge difference in not putting yourself at the bottom of the to-do list so i think that that's what i meant to tell you you know the minute that you really focus on yourself and your goals and not let the other goals of other people really get into your head because you care about them so much and you just want to make them proud things will get better, things will become clear, things will feel more free. Um, and I mean, happiness, who doesn't want, you know, to find that self happiness. So that's that, that's what I wanted to say. That is my, you know, brand, if you will, of self empowerment. And I hope this did empower you. If it did empower you, let me know. Because again, one of my love languages is knowing that you are loved, right? Did you like this? Let me know. Did you appreciate this? Let me know. Did you get something from this? Let me know. You can um, connect with me on social media, Zach Kira, Z-A-A-K-I-R-A-H, N-A-Y-Y-A-R. I tend to use my middle name a lot. Um, and sometimes you can still find me at my last name on, you know, various social media networks, but it's spelled M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D. And um, my social media handles are Illuminous One, which is the meaning of my first name, which is bright light so not my not my first name my bad brain fart my middle name is it, luminous or bright light is what Naya is so social media handles i-l-l-u-m-i-n-o-u-s-o-n-e connect with me um if this inspired and empowered you connect with me if you are ready to take those steps when it comes to building your brand building your strategy um, living a life that you know you desire. So until next time, thank you for watching.